So you want to take your dog for a run? Well, there's a few things you should probably prepare for. Dogs need a build-up of stamina. If you're if you're thinking of um, doing longer distance runs, um, dogs seem to be more adapted to short distance sprinting, so they'll need to build up their stamina in order to run longer distances. Are you right there? So there are some things that you should prepare when you're running your dog. Um, first, don't push your dog too hard. If you're if you're a runner, um, just don't expect your dog to be able to handle the distances that you run at. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> you funny dog. Also, there's a difference between trail running and road running. Um, I find it much better for the dog to take him on trails. Um, he's got a variety of textures he can run on. I don't need to worry about his pads overheating in summer because it can get very hot here in summer. We're talking high 30s Celsius, so at that temperature the footpath is cooking. Uh, another thing you should consider if you're running in a warmer climate, uh, please take water. Your dog will need it. I can't emphasize how many times I've seen people trying to run their dogs in the middle of summer on a smaller 5k course and their dog after three kilometers is on the ground panning, you know, just about ready to pass out. And the runner is basically just trying to push their dog into running more, you know, thinking that their dog's just being lazy. Um, in actual fact, their dog's exhausted and thirsty. If you need something, you can get a collapsible water ball, like this one here. So, it expands out like this, and then it collapses, it's very light. I carry in a little bag, um, if I'm running though, I'll, I'll take a little light backpack with me and put it in the back of that. So, dog's always got water. You want to go? <laughs> I better start walking, the dog's getting bored. So also, um, another thing I find quite important is even though Jack's not wearing a harness now, uh, getting a good harness is quite important for running. Um, because at times, if I'm running him on leash in events that require me to have a leash, he'll stop so suddenly he'll yank my shoulder out. And I'm pretty sure it's not good for his neck either. So at least with a harness, it's just pulling his shoulders, so that's, that's not a bad thing. So if you get a harness, don't get those ones that cross around the front that has the nameplate on it. I know they look all nice and fancy, but they also, if you're going to take your dog running, you don't want to strict his shoulder. So. You can imagine trying to run with a rubber band strapped around your upper leg. So that's basically what those hands is like. It's it's like a band strapped around his upper leg, so he's is restricting the movement of his legs. You can see it when you compare dogs with that harness and without. The ones with the harness can generally run faster and uh, with a better cadence. Another important thing to consider is the time of day that you run. If you're in a warmer climate, warmer temperate, subtropical, tropical, it's nearly always best to run at sunrise or as close to sunrise as possible. That's the time where it's, the humidity is probably the lowest and um, the air is the coolest. Late afternoons are not that great for running, trust me, because I've we live in a subtropical climate and it's sweltering at that time. So morning tends to be the best time. If you're in a cooler climate, uh, you could probably, like now it's winter time here, so it's maybe 20 degrees during the middle of the day. You could probably run any time of day. So it depends very much on your climate.
One last thing, if you want to run your dog, uh, it really depends a lot on breed as well. Well, it depends what type of running you want to do. If you want to do long distance enduring, endurance running, then you'll need a dog that can cope with that type of running. Or if you're a sprinter, probably any type of dog will do, I guess. Wait, wait. Also, the type of dog you have will really dictate what type of running you can do. So, for instance, don't expect to do much running if you have a Chihuahua or a French Bulldog. Um, it will probably be torture to try and run those any type of distance. Uh, yeah, I don't think the genetics are just able to cope with that type of endurance. But a few years ago, I used to be in a trail running club, and most of the other people in that club used to run ultra marathons, not me. And if they bought their dogs for like an easy 10 or 15k run, they would all have border collies. So those dogs have amazing endurance and amazing ability to cope with hot weather as well even though they have a, a thick coat like Jack. So it's not to say that you, you need to get a border collie. Um, I mean, Jack is good at running. I don't run long distance, not anymore. Maybe the most we've run is maybe seven or eight K on the trail and he seems to cope with that fine. So even if I go early in summer, he still copes with that pretty fine. I might need to bring water with me in summer, but in winter, I don't need to. So those are my tips for getting a dog to run. Bring water, take it easy, be mindful of hot temperatures, and don't forget the dog has a fur coat and you don't. So he's going to overheat a lot quicker than you. And um, have fun.